Okay, this is a lesson on drag forces. And when I talk about drag forces, um, we're talking about forces that change with velocity. Um, so the forces that you're typically used to learning about in an algebra-based physics course are uh, friction. So if you had a block that's on a flat surface and it's sliding to the right, so it's got a velocity to the right, then, and you were neglecting air resistance, you would draw a free body diagram and you would look at the forces that were acting on it. You would have the force normal, the force gravity, which is the weight, and you would have a frictional force that's acting back to the left. And in this case, the frictional force is constant. It's not changing. It doesn't, even though the block is slowing down because of friction, the rate at which it's slowing down is staying the same. So if we were to write our F net equation, you can write this two different ways, right? You can write F net in the X direction equals MA is equal to, let's call to the right positive. So our force of friction would act to the left, so it would be minus force of friction. And then we could go and solve this problem and find the acceleration. You could also do this as sum of the forces in the X, and it's really just the same thing. Either way, you were taught to do that. It doesn't matter. Now, you can solve for, once you have the acceleration, you can then find the velocity. And you could do this many different ways. Uh, you could do this with this formula, VF equals VO plus AT. You could do it with VF squared equals VO squared plus 2A delta X. You could find out where it is by using this formula. So you could find out a lot about this block, about its velocity and about its position after you solve for the acceleration from a Newton's law equation. But the problem is, what if the force itself is changing? Now we've got a different situation. And there are drag forces that are like that. So now let's say, instead of having a frictional force, let's say this is on ice or something like that. See, it's got some velocity to the right. Uh, we'll call it to the right positive. So it's got some initial velocity. Um, I don't know what it is. It's uh, something. Something for the initial velocity. Again, it's got uh, force normal up, and it's got an equal weight down, force gravity down. Um, and I'm going to say uh, no surface friction. There's no friction here between the surfaces. But there still is some drag force that we're going to call F drag. Now, this drag force is a result of air resistance. And you know this situation. This thing is moving fast. It's like being in a car. And let's say you put your hand out of the window of the car, you feel a lot of air pushing on your hand. So the drag force is very large. And as if the car is not traveling very fast, 10 miles an hour, say you put your hand out of the window, then it doesn't push on your hand very much. So this drag force, F drag, uh, depends on velocity or speed. It depends on velocity. And if the, the way that the air is moving over this is nice and smooth, let's say that our block is a very aerodynamic car. This is uh, not the best looking car, but we have a car and the air comes up and it's so aerodynamic, and the car's not moving very fast, then the air is gonna move over it very uh, smooth and slowly and not separate into turbulent flow. It's not gonna swirl back here. Then the drag force is called laminar. This is a laminar flow. And laminar flow means that the F drag is equal to KV. The, a little bit more with laminar flow, we usually wouldn't talk about this so much with cars, but uh, usually materials that are very viscous. Um, a good example would be uh, a steel ball moving through 
um, honey or something like that, in which case the speed, it reaches terminal velocity very quickly, the, the flow is very slow around it, so it would be laminar. But in any case, we're just going to pretend our car is uh, undergoing laminar flow. It's sliding on some kind of ice, so we're not dealing with any friction in the tires, um, and it's going to come to a stop. So the question is, uh, can we come up with an equation for V? Can we come up with an equation for velocity final or velocity instantaneous at any moment in time? Um, and can we come up with a uh, equation for position at any time? Now, if the acceleration was constant, it wouldn't be a big deal because we could get the acceleration from our Newton's law equation and then just plug it into a uh, kinematics equation would be no problem. But here we've got a different situation because the force drag is changing. So now we've got a situation where the drag force is very large to begin with. And then as it cruises along, it slows down. And as it slows down, the drag force decreases. So the force that's actually doing the acceleration is itself changing. So if we looked at our Newton's law equation, we would write F net in the x direction is equal to ma, and that would be equal to, what would it be equal to? It would be equal to minus F drag. So that is our net force right there. That's our net force. And so our net force is making, that's a constant, is making this accelerate. And since that's changing, the acceleration is changing. And if the acceleration is changing, we can't use these formulas because these all depend on constant acceleration. So let's figure out a way to come up with a formula for velocity and position when the acceleration is changing. That's what we're going to do right now. OK, so let's start, as you do with many problems, when you want to find things out about them, like for, when forces are acting on them with a the free body diagram. I'm going to write Fn and Fg, even though we don't really end up dealing with them. And we have F drag, as we did in the last part that we just explained. So we want to come up with a formula for, for velocity. Now, you remember that we said that F net in the x direction is equal to ma which is equal to F drag. And we said that because this is laminar flow, that F drag is equal to KV. So that's going to be F net X equals MA equals, uh, let me put a minus sign. We'll call to the right positive, since the drag is acting to the left. That's going to be equal to minus KV. We could really pick any direction to be positive or negative. Now, if you remember, when you do an integral, the integral of acceleration is equal to the change in velocity. And our goal was to find a formula for velocity. Well, there's velocity right there. But the problem here is that this acceleration is changing. So we never know what this is going to be. But if we do the integral of this, then what we can do is find out a formula for the velocity with respect to time, because since acceleration depends on the time um, at which the air, the air is pushing on it. So in this case, we're going to set this up as an integral. And to do the integral, um, we're going to put in what acceleration is. And hopefully, you've learned that acceleration is equal to dv over dt. I think they teach that in calculus classes. That's its definition. It's the derivative of velocity, um, derivative of time. So it's, kind of, it's, it's finding out the acceleration at that moment in time. And that's equal to minus kv. So that wasn't too bad. And now we have to do the integral. And this is where it starts to get a little bit more tricky. To do an integral, if we did an integral right now, we'd be integrating on velocity here and time, and we can't integrate two different things on the same, in the same integral.